Good afternoon, Revit users. This is Micro CAD Tech Team coming at you today, and today we are going to do a brief overview of our Micro CAD productivity tools for Revit. If you aren't familiar with our productivity tools, we offer them for Revit, AutoCAD, and Civil 3D. They are quick, simple actions that increase your team's productivity. So let's dive in and see what some of these items can do for us today. All right, so I am using Revit 2021 for this demonstration. Um, our product does work on various um, releases of Revit 2018 and forward um, for those of you on subscription. Once you do download your MicroCAD productivity tools, you will get an additional tab here within your ribbon. Um, and this is where all of the tools live um, and where you will need to go to reference them. So starting out over here on our left-hand side, um, so first up is our BIM manager tools. So these tools allow for users to quickly and easily manage their Revit family libraries, um, specifically with tools that we see to export um, as well as our import, as well as our drop down from our BIM of our upgrade families. Um, additionally, you can quickly manage um, type and instance properties um, with our multi-type editor dialog box. Um, you see expanding here, this brings up everything available in this instance for ceilings. Um, close that out. In addition to all of those tools, we have our BIM query, which perhaps is one of the most robust tools in the entire suite. It is an advanced spreadsheet parameter editor for Revit instance and type properties. Users can edit parameters within native Revit, or you can actually save this out to Microsoft Excel, edit it in Microsoft Excel, and then actually bring it back into Revit and populate that information. In addition, you can also have presets um, and build those into your Revit templates. Like I said, this is a very robust tool. We highly encourage every user to use it. So moving along the line, we have our project cleanup on our QAQC panel. So our project cleanup allows for cleanup of a variety of items within our project. So you see it cleans up unplaced rooms, areas, spaces, as well as um, line styles, patterns, and a few other options in there. It's a great way to keep your model in check and assure the quality of your project throughout different stages. Additionally, on our QA QC panel, we have our QA model review. What this does is it allows for a quick check of tagged items within any active view, as well as tagging um, any, any, anything that is not tagged at that moment in time. Um, all of these tools are a great way to keep your project um, lightweight while also maintaining your specific level of quality. So next up is our analysis panel. So under our analyze dropdown, we see from um, a few different tools um, they can calculate different values of selected geometry. Um, you can actually store that information within shared parameters. In addition to this dropdown, you see options like swing direction for your doors. Um, the path manager is new for Revit 2020 and 2021. It builds upon the Rev out of the box Revit path of travel. Um, in addition, you see this room report that brings information related to all your rooms um, into this specific report. Um, our updates, just updates anything. If anything changes throughout the project, just keeps all that information up to date. All right, moving down the line. So our reinforcement is actually only for our structural users, but what it does is it makes our rebar visibility settings in 3D, whether they're obscured, unobscured, wireframe, solid. So that's a great use for all of our structural clients out there. So moving on to our annotate tab. So 
This is probably one of my favorite areas of the Revit productivity tools. You have a whole host of commands within here. So starting here with the align. So our align can align text in a variety of ways. Of course, this makes your drawings look crisp and clean. Well, you know, we don't want text floating everywhere. At the same time, you can always change your text to all uppercase or all lowercase. Um, we've, I'm sure we've all made that mistake of typing in sentence case and later needing it all to uppercase. This is a quick way to remedy that situation. Um, we also have bubbles. So bubbles are quite fun. Um, so I'm going to select one here real quick. So the bubbles um, allow you to see the end bubbles for your grids or for your levels. It's just a quick visual, easy command. This way you aren't going through your project and selecting each one individually and turn, turning them on or off at different end points. Let me close out of that one. Um, in addition, we have our renumber. So our renumber offers a whole host of items. So you can renumber items um, by a room, a mark parameter. You can renumber that grid. Um, you can renumber your rooms or spaces, um, your views on your sheets if they happen to get out of order. You do a whole host of items within this drop down. Um, in addition, we have our legend. So our legend works slightly different than your out of the box, um, but it will start to create ma um, either material legend or legend by categories such as doors or windows. Um, and of course, you can start to build on your legend for whatever information you need after that. And our first that I skipped over in the beginning is our import spreadsheet. So this import spreadsheet is great if you have already done something within Microsoft Excel and you are now wanting to bring that into your Revit project. At the same time, this works great with that BIM query tool. If you did save something out of Revit and you're now wanting to bring in that updated information. We see the BIM query and the import used a lot together. All right, moving down the line to our modify panel. So our modify tool set includes tools for creating floors based upon selected rooms. We also have editing grid names. So perhaps if you have um, half step grids that you need to rename um, later on in your project, this is a great way to do that. We also have multi-join, which allows for joining of multiple different categories within Revit. And we also have the assembly tool, which automates view creation and sheet placement for your desired assemblies. All right, moving on to our view panel, another one of my personal favorites. So our view tool sets allow for a multitude of zoom and view possibilities. So if there's not a way that you can find a way to zoom with these tools, I'm not sure there is a way in Revit. Um, so to begin with, we have our simple on and off toggle. Um, as you see here, you could select an element and then either toggle off the category or the instance. Um, this is a great way if you want to select multiple categories at once, say your doors and your walls and toggle the entire category off at once for both of those, you can do that versus the traditional out of the box with Revit. You would have to select each category individually and then hide that category. Um, an even quicker way is our on and our off toggles that you see here, you can easily turn these on and off. Um, and the great thing about these is they do work with your visibility and graphic overrides for this particular view. So that way you're not gonna get into any competing settings anywhere within your project. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in addition to some of our views, um, we have our zoom to room or space. So if you're trying to find a particular area within your large project, you can certainly do that. Um, and then our view utilities, perhaps one of the easiest ones is our view lookup. So what that does is it brings up a dialog box with every single view that is 
within your project. So if you've gotten a quite a large project and you've lost where one of those small details might be, this view lookup is excellent for you because you can go through and get a snapshot in time um, of what each view might look like without having to open a bunch of different views. So closing that out. So a few other of our view tools, we have crop regions. Um, you can be very specific in how you want your crop region. You can do a crop region from a specific selection. You can match crop regions from view to view, even camera view crop regions. Um, our drop down sheet um, tool here has a variety of tools specifically related to sheets, such as our view and sheet manager, um, align viewports on sheets, and our sheet set manager. So we encourage everyone to check those out. We're sure there is a way that that can help your all's productivity. So another robust one is our room view. So what your room views can do for you, as you see, it brings up another dialog box. You can actually start to create more views based upon specific rooms. So say, for example, you have a restroom and you need some interior elevations for that. You can come in here and select your restroom and automatically create those four cardinal direction interior elevations that you need. And you can certainly do more than one room at a time. So it does really start to save some time overall. So, um, and last but certainly not least on our view um, is our view depth override. So this is great for um, elevations more and some 3D aspects. Um, of course, the further you get away from the view plane, items do become lighter in color, and you can, of course, set those. You can, as you can see here, you can have hatch pattern overrides, invert overrides, line weight overrides. The choices are entirely customizable to your individual specifications, but we really encourage everyone to check those out. And our last remaining panel is our selection panel, uh, certainly not least though. So we can select from a variety of ways. So we can select category, family, type, bounding elements, hosted elements, um, the host element from something that is hosted. We can even select a bunch of items based upon our work set. So I know a lot of times there's not a great way to select something within Revit straight out of the box, um, but our tools certainly allow a whole host of possibilities that you can do that. You can also do a filter um, based upon um, your levels, um, work sets, phases, um, whole host of options again. And then, of course, we have our model, model less. Um, which is, you know, it's items, you know, that aren't um, exactly modeled yet, but are overall within your project. Um, and of course, last on here is our settings, your license, your information, and your help. Um, so with that, um, that is what we have for you today. Um, we thank you for joining. Um, please come back later um, as we will have more in-depth videos on each of those panels and those tool sets. So we'll dive more into those into individual videos. Um, if you have any questions, please feel to reach out to us. Thanks and have a great and wonderful day.